Hello conscious viewers, welcome to Science and Spirituality on Supreme Master Television. We are pleased to present the second in a three-part series featuring an interview with Dr. Stephen Harefield from the U.S., who is a Zen priest and an author, about his most recent book entitled The Twelve Sacred Principles of Karma. Dr. Harefield regularly lectures about spiritual topics such as the power of thought and the benefits of meditation and is dedicated to helping those who are in search of their original self-nature. Last week, Dr. Harefield described how the law of karma can be explained through 12 equally important principles. He says these principles serve as a road map in helping us to realize the essence of life, and once we fully understand these different aspects of karma, we can be truly empowered in our lives. The 12 principles are The Great Principle Creation, Humility, Growth, The Mirrors, Synchronicity, Direction and Motives, Willingness, Here and Now, Change, Patience and Reward, Value and Upliftment. Today Dr. Harefield will introduce some of the core concepts of karma as discussed in his book beginning with what he calls the Great Principle. As you sow, so shall you reap. If you understand the great principle, then you'll easily understand the rest of them. If we looked at uh, every single act, action, thought, or word, or emotion that you have as a seed, so to speak, and you plant that seed, what do you want to harvest? What do you want out of that crop? You plant in the present. It grows tomorrow. It's your garden, and you are the only one that can harvest in it. No one else can. The Principle of Creation The Principle of Creation. That's the power that we all have. You have created every single second of every single minute, of every single hour, of every single day of your life in exactly the way that you want it. The concept behind the uh, principle of creation is also personal ownership of what you have created. I cannot blame you for anything. I can only own what I have created, own what I feel. That's not up to you to control. So if a car, a bank account, a house makes you happy, if your children, your husband makes you happy, you do not have any control of your happiness at all. Zero. Everything you feel, everything you think, is a result of a karmic return. I'm the one that generated it in the first place. See, when we have events that occur in our life, it's to educate us. Only you can change the circumstances. The Principle of Humility The Principle of Humility is summed up in this phrase. What you resist persists for you. In other words, we create our own difficulties, in particular through negative thoughts or emotions. Dr. Harefield learned the lesson of humility while he was a monk in a Tibetan monastery. There he was made to confront his greatest opponent, fear. I'll share the story of the tiger and how he and I met. I was out in the fields one day um, and Master Lob Seng said, young man, what's your greatest fear? And I said, um, a slow, agonizing death. A few days later, uh, the Rinpoche, or abbot of the monastery, uh, sent a runner out into the fields to have me come and see him. And he wanted me to pick up some spices and thread and buttons from the village. I went out the front door of the monastery, and I it was about 20 feet away from the door. And there was this Bengal tiger just standing in the middle of the path. And I froze. I was 20 feet from the door. It's almost a hundred yards from me, so I could have made it to the door very easily. And I want to tell you something, I could not move. And I thought, well, if I stand here frozen, it won't see me. And I'm looking down this path, and all of a sudden, he starts moving very slowly, one paw at a time. And then he started going a little faster and a little faster, and I still absolutely could not move. And the last thing I remembered was seeing this cat just springing into the air. Now. 
I weigh about 168 pounds. This tiger was about 400 pounds, and it landed right on me. I'm screaming and hollering. This cat's licking my head, got its teeth in my skull, and I never realized it wasn't biting me. And then all of a sudden, I heard laughter. And I get this cat off my head, and I turned around and looked, and there's Lob saying, the Lama, Kaila, and two other monks, they were just laughing hysterically. And when I was down at the river washing out my robes, uh, you know what happened, uh, Lob Sang and the tiger uh, walked down, and Lob Sang told me the story. The uh, cat's mom had been poached, and they found it at the front door of the monastery, and they raised it from a two-month-old tiger. And all it knew was monks. But I had the best friend from that day on with that cat. And I was cured totally of death, and especially a slow, agonizing one. So what does that have to do with karma? Karma, or fear, is the biggest holdback in karma and what it will do to you ultimately. If a person lives fearfully, then they will always bring to themselves things that create fear within them, and everything becomes magnified. The principle of growth. The greatest level of growth happens internally and not externally. The law of growth is getting a person to move forward in their lives. Instead of um, looking always at things you don't have, why not appreciate uh, what you do have? Okay, that's uh, where your growth will actually occur the greatest. We are divine creatures. An angry person cannot shift the anger until they recognize the fact that they are. So the law of growth is about making sure that we do change. The principle of the mirrors. This principle says our life experiences always reflect back to us exactly who we are in any given moment. The fifth principle where you have um, the law of the mirrors, that's actually broken down into seven different reflections. Life is always showing you exactly who you are, which is why blame is an exercise in futility. There's no need for conflict. Why? You have your experience, I have my experience. And we all look at life through our historical experience. What has happened before determines how you see things today. And if we don't like our lives, all we have to do is shift our perspective, our actions and our activities into a different dynamic. And when we do, and we do it with intention, our entire lives change. There's no way around that at all. And here's the funny thing. You can work out karma in this lifetime or the universal weight, and you work it out in another lifetime or another, or another. The principle of synchronicity. Synchronicity is about living in equality, peace, and harmony. I think the greatest interrupter of synchronicity is judgment. Mm -hmm. um, the law of synchronicity is more about the idea of something we chatted about earlier, and that's that uh, there is no good, there is no bad, there is no right, there is no wrong. There just is life, and it's all in how we uh, uh, tend to see it. Uh, synchronicity is the true uh, harmonic of life. Um, synchronicity is not being owned by anything outside you. Uh, is not uh, ever attempting to prove yourself or to be something that you're not. Uh, and most people, especially in this part of the world, are always attempting to be who they aren't as opposed to who they are. The law of synchronicity is more about truth and error. When you're walking on the path of truth, uh, you have synchronicity. When you walk on the path of error, you have struggle. Mm -hmm. And all error is is a steering mechanism to take you back to synchronicity. The principle of direction and motives. And can you elaborate on the principle of direction and motives? That's more about intention. If your motive wasn't of the deepest of integrity, all right, your direction is going to change into a direction that you didn't anticipate. The intention that you're putting into a thing is the seed that's going to create the direction. The principle of willingness. How about uh, the principle of willingness? In the 12 uh, principles, they get more subtle uh, as they go along. And in the law of willingness, 
basically is being willing to uh, face yourself. You planted the garden, now you've got all these weeds in that garden, it's required for you to remove them. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to change routines of your own minds? Are you willing to shift your emotions to bring you a greater experience? I can promise you one thing, Whatever you're unwilling to do is going to be constantly in front of you until you do it. The principle of the present moment. If you can learn to master the idea of keeping your mind and thoughts right behind your eyes, you'll never worry again. What causes worry is when we look into the future or we look into the past. But if you learn to stay in the present moment, there's never anything to worry about. The principle of patience and reward. The point is, is whenever you're impatient about anything, that you will always be faced with impatient situations. In other words, it becomes more and more magnified. But the more patient you are about any and everything, the more rewarding life is. It's amazing in how much impatience actually blocks um, almost virtually any event in your life. Uh, a lot of people are impatient. They want to uh, have love in their life, so they get in a hurry, and they get in a relationship that turns out to be the worst nightmare. Well, there's no reward in that. If you're patient in all things, it's always much more rewarding and much more healthy in your mind and in your emotions and in your body at the same time. The principle of value and upliftment. The essence of it is every person there is value and it's our function to always lift people by being in service to people, not taking from. I mean, if I'm walking down the street and I see somebody in tears, it's always my desire to only help them if I can. If there's some way that I can, then I will. I just won't walk by. I just won't leave them there. That's the value of upliftment. We thank you, Dr. Stephen Harefield, for sharing your wonderful life experiences and deep knowledge about the workings of karma. Gracious viewers, please join us again next Monday on Science and Spirituality for the conclusion of our interview with Dr. Harefield. For more details on Dr. Stephen Harefield, please visit www.harefield.com. CDs and books including the 12 Sacred Principles of Karma by Dr. Harefield are available at the same website. Thank you for your presence today on our program. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News. May the Providence shine the light of wisdom and love on us all. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.